Today I'm delighted to speak to an old friend, Richard Whittington, who's a professor at the Said Business School, Oxford University. Good afternoon, Richard. Good afternoon, Carl. Good to see you again. Richard, one of the things you've been writing about, I think, which is particularly intriguing, is the idea of open strategy. What do you mean by open strategy? Yes, open strategy is a concept that uh, relies on some of the work which has been done in the innovation field, or open innovation, and is concerned with the way in which strategy is now becoming a much more open, diffuse, uh, and transparent and inclusive uh, practice. So strategic planning now is no longer a matter of a small elite in the corporate head office or a group around a divisional general manager. There's much more inclusive and more open to the external sources that might be consulting, but also as a matter of accountability to external stakeholders as well. So why has strategy changed? Well, strategy is changing for all sorts of reasons. I, I suggest there are three or maybe four key forces which are driving the changes. One I describe as organisational, another I describe as social cultural, and the third is effectively the technological angle. So in terms of the organisational, the organisations in which strategy is taking place are changing enormously. One important issue is, if you take the long view on strategy, is that increasing accountability to external shareholders and particularly large investor groups. So that nowadays, people have to justify their strategy to investors in a completely different way to maybe 20 years ago. Uh, Organisations are different too in being much more distributed, being much more global, and so they have to be more inclusive to the various parts of their organisation distributed around the world. So there's transparency to investors, inclusion of subsidiaries um, scattered around the world or different businesses in different fields. So that's the organisational part, essentially. The social cultural issue is, is more complex. Um, there are a number of issues here. One of them is uh, the, the workforce, the managerial workforce, is quite different and much higher education and much more skilled strategically than it was 20 years ago. Um, I'm referring back to 20 years ago because many of our stereotypes of strategy were formed in the experience of the 70s and 80s. Uh, and so we have a, a workforce which is much more capable and demanding of inclusion. At the same time, they're also more mobile, very typically. So nothing's that secret anyway. So you may as well open up and be more transparent about your strategy because these people are moving around. And you can uh, reap the benefits of that by being more transparent. You get more ideas, just as in the open innovation uh, concept. Being open to your customers, being open to external stakeholders makes you more effective in innovation. So to uh, with these socio-cultural changes, um, being more open to external ideas, ideas from consultants, from business schools, and from customers and clients, and from people coming in and coming out of the organisation, will help you generate new ideas. And the third, uh, third force I, I would highlight is the technological, so that we have clearly all sorts of new technologies within organisations to include more people in strategy conversations, IBM Strategy Jams are a famous example where they've developed a new platform for including more people and uh, soliciting more ideas into their strategy process. And also there's a technolo technology um, phenomenon which is po possibly less w welcome. Things like WikiLeaks are leading to a great deal more leakage of information outside. We're becoming, whether we like it or not, more transparent. And my argument would be given WikiLeaks, given these other sorts of technologies which will allow information to go through organisational boundaries whether you like it or not, we may as well try to capture the advantages of that rather than simply resist the tide.